So with random sums, um, one question that people have in calculus or we got calculus studies is the area under a curve or basically taking a function and then finding the area between it and the x-axis, although you can also find the area between other things. And when you have something like the function on the left, which actually, it's, it's pretty simple because if you were to find the area underneath it, you have parts of it that are already zero, so those are not going to count. But and then you have the part between this part at two and zero. And to find the area of this, you're just literally finding the area of that box. So it's actually pretty simple. Um, let me get my correct. So the height here is two. The width here is also two. So the area is two times two and equal to four. So when we're finding the area of something like this, it's pretty simple. You could say the area of this function is four units. Now, this gets to be a little trickier when you have something more complicated like this one on the right, because it's not how you find the area of curves. And, and that's basically partly of what half the calculus is all about, is how to find the area of a curve. And so Riemann came up with something called the Riemann sum, there's a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum. Um, there's different versions of this, but basically the idea is that you approximate the sum based off of you draw little rectangles. Um, for something like this, anything that's under the x-axis is considered a negative area. Anything above the x-axis is considered a positive area. So the way the left sum works is you pick how wide you want your rectangles to be. And so let's just pick a width of one because that's what we have our grid for. And then you draw rectangles from the left to the right. So I'm gonna draw these in and let me, I can get this, let's do this in blue. So like here, your left ring, there is no rectangle because you're at zero. But then you have this rectangle. So you find the left point and that's where you draw your rectangle. And then you draw your left point again. So sometimes it's your rectangle is below or kind of inside of your function and sometimes it's outside of your function. So we draw our rectangle below. Sometimes it's inside the function, sometimes it's out of the function. You just pick your left point and then you draw a rectangle. So you just keep drawing all these rectangles. And then you can see that some of them are over, some of them are under. And let's see, this one's all the way up here. And this particular function, it kind of goes on forever. So um, I'm only gonna draw what I currently see on the screen. So uh, this would be a left sum. And if I wanted to continue um, a left sum, this box would be, this rectangle would be over here. Um, and the next rectangle is off the screen. So let me highlight these so that you can actually kind of see the rectangles. Okay, so they're not perfect. <laughs> I highlighted a little bit beyond. Um, but you're estimating it by rectangles because we can find the area of a rectangle pretty easily. And then you add all of these little pieces up and that gives you an estimate for the area under the curve. Um, and sometimes it's an overestimate, sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's too small depending on what the curve looks like. I would guess that this one might be relatively accurate based off of my, my um, rectangles because some of them are over, some of them are under, and it looks like they might kind of even out. Um, there's also the right sum where you go from a different direction. You go from the right end to the left, and so that one, the rectangles look a little different. Usually if you do a left sum and then you do the right sum and you average them, that's closer to what the actual value is. Now I'm not going to go and find these all of these little areas, but um, you get the 